Uh, hey, if you got a Bible, go to Luke 5. If you don't got a Bible, we got a million note sheets we're going to pass out. Um, and you can, you can, all the verses are on there. You can take those and, and go through them. And um, we're going to look at something. I was really impressed at, uh, at uh, uh, Delilah and Sam and Susanna for crushing the five values from last week. Y'all give them an, another round of applause because that was solid. That was solid. Um, here's the thing. Can I tell you? Can I tell you a secret? I, uh, me and the team, we wrote ten values, and ninety percent of the time, I can only ever remember nine of them. Um, so, like, anytime I try to say all of them, I only remember nine. But today, we're gonna talk about five things that are important to following Jesus. So, Luke chapter five. We're going to look at this cool story. I like this. Um, Luke chapter 5, verse 1. It says this, One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. Okay. How many of you have ever been, uh, how many of you have ever been to a concert? Okay, been to a concert. Okay, how many of you have ever been, um, I don't know, like you, you've ever been somewhere to like see a famous person? Okay, anybody ever seen a famous person? Okay. Um, how many of you, how many of you, you know that there's some kind of like weird instinct that when you see somebody famous that you try to get closer to them, right? Yeah, you like try to get, like when you see, when you see somebody famous, you try to like, uh, let's you, you you'll do awkward things to get into a place to see them, right? There was one time that um, it was actually I was actually at a church and there was a uh, there was a pastor that I wanted to see. I was like six, all right. So, uh, but here's the deal: I climbed up on the chairs to see him, and um, but I was like climbed up and then I slipped and fell and cracked my head open. But I was that eager, I was that eager to get in close and see. There's been times that um, you ever been at like a concert and um, I don't know, I've been in concerts where it's like standing only. And so you'll be at the concert and you have people like that'll push past you, right, to get close. And you're like, I was here, right? But they like push in, you know, like they're like wiggling through, wiggling through the crowd like, excuse me, excuse me. Or, uh, or it's like that thing where they're like, my friend's up there. My, oh, hey, buddy, right? And they're like squeezing through the crowd and you're like, I don't know if you really have a friend up there, right? What it is, it's this eagerness. You're like excited. You want to get close. You want to be next to the thing. And one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite concerts ever was, uh, was this, this band that I got to see when I was in high school, and um, and uh, and I just remember uh, I was like I was like from me to the front row, right? Like I was like right here uh, with the band. Just got to watch it. It was awesome. It was awesome. Now here's what happens. Jesus is awesome. How many of you agree that Jesus is awesome? Yeah, Jesus is awesome. So Jesus is so awesome. That an entire crowd comes and finds Jesus, and they begin to listen to him, and they begin to press in, and they begin to focus. Because it says that they're pressed in, and, and it, it's this idea that they're focused. They're not distracted. They're, they're trying to check out what Jesus is saying. They want to hear. They traveled to hear him. You know, like, it would be crazy. It would be crazy if... Um, you know, you, maybe you drove like six hours to see your, your favorite, your favorite, con favorite singer in concert, right? You go, you go, um, you go all the way to Jacksonville. You drive six hours to see your favorite singer in Jacksonville. And then the whole concert, you're like on your phone and you're like, you're just like playing Clash of Clans, right? And like you miss the whole thing. Right, or you go and see, you go and see your favorite team play in their home stadium, right? You go all the way, you pay crazy money, and instead of watching the game, you're just like reading the highlights on ESPN, just like the text ones. You're like, okay, they scored. Right, like, 
Jesus is right there, and, and, and nobody wants to miss it. And so here's the thing. Everyone is engaged. They're focused in. They don't want to miss it. And this is one of the things that we want to be as Jesus followers. We want to be engaged. And so around here we say we are, say we are engaged. And it means we're focused in, we're dialed in. We are fixed on Jesus. We want to see Jesus. We want to hear Jesus. We don't want to be distracted by all the other things. There's a million things that can distract you. You know this. You know this. You know that from the time your parents say, hey, can you go do this chore, to the time you actually go and do the chore, there were 400 other things you did on the way, right? Your parents are like, hey, go take out the trash. And you're like, fine, okay, go get a snack, throw that away, get a drink, drink that, right? Like there's a million things. But with Jesus, we want to be engaged. Say, we are engaged. Now, here's the thing. People who follow Jesus should be engaged in Jesus. Do you agree? You agree? All right. But here's the thing. Sometimes the people who follow Jesus are really bad at the things that Jesus followers should do. Verse 2. He says, it says that Jesus noticed that there were two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Wait, wait, wait. So Jesus is preaching, and there's a whole group of people. There's a whole group of people who have traveled to hear Jesus. How many of you, how many of you would be excited if you knew that Jesus was speaking somewhere and you would go and see Jesus, right? Like, yeah, this is awesome. We want to see Jesus. So people have traveled to see Jesus, and then there's a group, and Jesus goes to the beach, and he's standing in front of these guys' boats, and the fishermen, like Jesus literally brought, brought the entire church to these guys, and do you know what those guys are doing? While Je yeah, while Jesus is preaching, they're cleaning their nets. While Jesus is preaching, they're ignoring him and, and doing other things. They're disengaged. But who are these guys? You ready? Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner. Anybody remember last week we talked about Simon Peter? Isn't he a follower of Jesus? Isn't he one of Jesus' disciples? Literally, Jesus is preaching. And, uh, and the guys who are not paying attention are the guys who should be paying the most attention. So Jesus gets into the boat, and he says, Simon, let's get into the water. So he sat in the boat, and he finished teaching the crowds from there. And so here's what he does, in case you didn't catch it. The, the disciples, they're, ex they're ignoring Jesus, and Jesus makes them get into the boat and paddle out further. Now they can't clean their nets. So they have to listen. Yeah, yeah. Jesus makes them <laughs> pay attention, right? <laughs> He's like, shut up and listen. All right, no, he didn't say that. But here's what happens. When he had finished, he said to Simon, hey, let's go a little deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Which, how many of you, that sounds like fun. How many of you, that sounds like fun. Okay. How many of you, though, know that if you had been, uh, how many of you, like, when you're outside for a really, really long time, you know, like all 15 minutes of PE, you're done, right? Anybody? Anybody get ex exhausted really quick outside? Okay. Now imagine, imagine, um, imagine like you get your your parents decide one day they're like, hey, no, you're not coming inside today. I just need you to be outside for eight hours today, right? You just be out outside. I just need you to do stuff. Now some of you, some of you are not daunted by that. Okay. But here's the deal. How many of you? How many of you know that if you had just worked like 12 hours outside? And then you were finished. You were almost done. You were cleaning up to go home and take a nap. And then Jesus comes in and says, hey, guys, I need you to, let's work some more. What he says is, hey, let's go out and fish some more. And here's what, here's what Simon says, master, we worked hard all last night and we didn't catch a thing. How many of you have ever been fishing? Okay. How many of you have ever been fishing like a really long time and you caught nothing? 
nothing. All right. How many of you know that's like one of the most disappointing things in the world? Or how about this? How about this? You, you, studied, you studied for like 10 hours for a test, and you still got a bad grade. Right? Or how about this? You practice at home every single day, and then you got into school band, and the first thing you have to play, you mess up. Right? Or how many, right? Like, how many of you know, like, there's moments where you did all of that work, and nothing happened. And you feel so, anybody know that disappointment? Just that like, (sighs) and then you come home. You come home and you, you're telling so, like you're telling your parents, like, man, I studied so hard and I'm so frustrated and nothing happened. And your parents go, study harder. <laughs> or, or they go, hey, your coach goes, your teacher goes, I need you to practice more. <laughs> or, or somebody, you, you, t- you say like, hey, man, we fished. We fished for like 10 hours. And we caught nothing, and your friend goes, you were doing it wrong. And you're like, I'm going to fight you. You know, like, you just, like, you just, in that moment, in that moment, you're like, mm, don't tell. And Jesus, Jesus says, let's go out and fish some more. And Simon's like, Jesus, we worked so hard last night. We worked so hard. And we didn't catch a single thing. But watch this. Because this is important. Everybody gets disappointed. Everybody gets disappointed. Everybody is asked to do things that they don't want to do, right? How many of you have been asked to do something you didn't want to do this week? How many of you have been asked to do, how many of you woke up and you didn't want to wake up today? All right, yeah, there we go. So already today, you've got experience with this. But watch. Here's what the followers of Jesus do. Because it says this. He says, but if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. Jesus, if you ask me to, I'll do whatever you say. I don't feel like it. I don't want to. I think this is a stupid idea. We fished all last night. I'm a professional fisherman. We caught nothing. I think I'm good at my job. I think I know what I'm doing. I know you're just a teacher. You don't really fish. I know this isn't really your game. But because you asked me to, Jesus, I'll do it. Jesus, because you asked me, I'll do whatever it is. Jesus, because you asked me, and here's what, here's what followers of Jesus do. We honor Jesus. We honor people. We honor authority. We honor others. We are, say we are. We are honoring. See, people who follow Jesus, we honor others. We value others. We treat them with respect. We listen. We care. We respond, and Peter does something. He's exhausted. He's tired. It's that moment. It's that moment of weakness, and he says, you know what? Nope. Jesus, we're going to do it, and here's what happens. Verse 6. This time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon... Both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. Now think about this. Think about this. You have two boats. All these boats do is catch fish. You have their nets. All these nets do is catch fish. They have so much fish that the nets are tearing and it's pulling the boats underwater. Yo, that's a lot of fish, right? How many of you would recognize at that moment that God had done a miracle, right? Like, like if your, if your team had gone 0 and 20, and Jesus goes, hey, I want you to play one more game. And you're like, okay, 0 and 21, here we go. And you win by like 700 points. How many of you recognize that's a miracle, right? Right. God shows up. Jesus does a miracle. And when Jesus does a miracle, guess what? Something happens in Peter because he realizes he realizes that, that all of the things that he's done wrong, they actually matter. You know, Peter's a guy who, who probably, he, he just does whatever he wants to do, and he lives the way he wants to live, and, and yet probably doesn't really think that God's watching. And yet he has this moment where God is literally in the boat with him. And he sees God move. He sees this miracle happen. 
In verse 8, it says, When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh, Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. Verse 10 is, is interesting. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. So here's the thing. There's boats full of his friends. All of Peter's friends are around him. How, how many of you, how many of you, um, how many of you know sometimes it's embarrassing to be honest around, um, around your friends, right? Yeah. Like it's embarrassed to maybe do something bold around your friends, right? And here's the thing. Peter begins to admit the things that he's done wrong. He has this moment where he's so amazed by Jesus that he begins to tell Jesus, Jesus, these are the things that I've done wrong. I'm not a good person. I've done a lot of things bad. No, Jesus, I'm not a good person. I've sinned a lot. I, I'm sorry. And he begins to confess. You know what he does? Simon Peter gets real. Everybody say, we are real. Simon Peter, in this moment, in this boat, he begins to get real. He begins to get honest. He begins to stop hiding. Sometimes it's really easy to hide how you actually feel and say things that aren't true. Or hide what you actually think and say, say things that aren't what you actually think. Because you're trying to hide something. You're trying to pretend something. But people who follow Jesus, it's so essential that we get like Peter and we get real. That we get honest. Because if you don't have a moment like this where you get to be real. And listen, Peter's so real that he doesn't even care who's listening. Like, he doesn't care that his coworkers are there. He doesn't care that his friends are there. Do you realize that most likely Andrew and James and John are teenagers. Do you realize this? That like the guys who are in the boat with him are his teenage friends. That, that, that it's a moment where Peter's going to say, hey, this is something I've done. And like, um, and like those moments where you share something and your friends are immature and they laugh at you, right? You ever try to be honest and your friends are immature and they make fun of you, right? You try to share something real and you're like, hey, I really feel bad about this. And your friends are like. <laughs> and Peter doesn't care. He just doesn't care. He's like, no, Jesus is more important. I'm going to be real. Because it's more important to be real than to care about what other people might think about you. Being real with Jesus is more important. Peter gets it. So as Jesus followers, we are real. It's after this moment that Jesus says, all right, guys, I want you to follow me. Then verse 27. It says, later as Jesus left this town, he saw a tax collector named Levi. Let me say something real quick. A tax collector is like the worst person in the world for them. Like, I have no qualms with the IRS. I'm not mad at them. They can collect my taxes all they want. No, no, no. But in, in Rome, a tax collector was, was somebody who most of the time, most of the time would take extra money off the top. And they had the Roman government, like, they had the Roman military to protect them. So essentially, they would steal from other Jews and, and, and they had the military to back them up, right? How many of you know if there was a kid, like if there was a kid in your school who was allowed to come up and he was allowed to like punch in your ID and get your lunch on your account and all the teachers backed him up, how many of you would be upset, right? Like they ate your lunch and they got away with it. Aren't you, aren't you a little frustrated by that, right? Or you, as soon as you sit down, as soon as you sit down, kid comes and he grabs, like, the best part, right? He grabs, um, he grabs like, the, the chips or something. He grabs, like, the, the ice cream or he grabs, like, the, he takes the best part of the lunch and you try to, you're like, 
you try to get like the, the principal's attention. You're like, hey, wait, 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 they stole my lunch. And the principal's like, yeah, they can. You want more of his lunch? Take more of it, right? I mean, that's essentially, that's essentially like what the tax collectors get to do. So how many of you, how many of you would agree you would probably hate the tax collectors? All right. But here's the thing. A tax collector walks up and Jesus says, follow me and be my disciple. Jesus is friendly to somebody who probably is hated by every single other person. Like every single other person who's following Jesus right now is like, I don't like this guy. He says, follow me. And so Matthew, Levi, leaves everything and follows him. And then the next verse says, later, Levi held a banquet. He threw a party in his home with Jesus as the guest of honor. And many of Levi's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with them. So here's what happens. Levi throws a party with two cliques that never hang out. Right? He throws a party with all of his tax collector friends, which are all of the people that you don't like. And then all of your, your friends. So imagine all of the people that you don't like and all of your friends at one party together. And Jesus is like, come on, guys, let's hang. Right? Jesus is the one guy in the middle who's like, everybody. Right? He's like, come on. And you're like, I hate those guys. And he's like, that's stupid. Right? Here's the thing. Jesus chooses to be friendly to everyone. And he demonstrates this so well that Levi chooses to be friendly to strangers friendly to enemies, and he teaches his disciples to be friendly to the people that they don't like. See, the, the, the followers of Jesus choose to be friendly because that's what we see Jesus do. Like, we're friendly to people. Listen, I'm not even, I, I, G, listen, I, it's, one, it's a huge ask to say, hey, I want you to be friendly to people that are, that are, that you don't like. But here's the thing. What about just strangers? And I'm not talking like, I'm not like talking about like creepy guys in mustaches and white vans. I'm talking about like, I'm talking about like a kid that nobody else talks to in school. I'm talking, I'm talking about the kid that nobody else talks to. Like in, and Jesus followers can be friendly. We choose to show kindness. I'm talking about when somebody comes into J-Box and it's their very first time and you're like, I don't know them. And you just turn around. And I'm just saying, Jesus followers are like, hey, I don't know you, but I'll be friendly. I can be nice to you. I can introduce myself, say hi, see if you know anybody, invite you to sit next to me. We start there. So the followers of Jesus are friendly, but here's the deal. How many of you know that if you had all of the people that you don't like and all of your best friends in one place together, that there would probably be some drama, right? Yeah. Like there was one time I got invited, I got invited to, um, I got invited to a party, and in between the time I had been invited and between the time I went to the party, um, the, pers the, like, the person whose party it was stopped being my friend. Okay, but here's the thing. My mom still made me go. <laughs> Y'all know that's an awkward party, right? Like you're at a party. And so here's the thing. Of course, drama's going to happen, and drama happened. Drama happens at this party. A group of people begin to complain. Verse 30, it says, the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complained bitterly to Jesus. Why do you eat and drink with such scum? Those are strong words, right? Scum. You've never, you've never called somebody scum and meant it seriously. You never have. You never have. That's not like a normal. Um, there's probably other words that you use that you're like, I hate that person. I do not like them. They're stupid, right? You have other words for that. But these guys, they use the word. They're like, these guys are scum. And this is Jesus' response. Verse 31, Jesus answered, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I've come to call not those who, um, and so, yeah, I've not come to call those who are righteous, but those who know they are sinners 
and need to repent. And this is what Jesus says. Listen, I know that you guys would never hang out with these guys. And because of that, these guys will never find God. I know that, that your friends would never, ever hang out with these guys. Because you don't like them. But guess what? Because you would never hang out with them, they'll never find God. And they'll never change. And they're going to be stuck. And so guess what? Jesus says, I'm going to do something a little differently. I'm going to change the culture. I'm going to do it in a way because I want to see them find God. And nobody else is going to do it. And so what Jesus says is, I'm going to change and create the culture. Everybody say, we are culture creators. Listen, everywhere you go, you get to shape the culture. You affect your house culture. You affect your class culture. You affect your team culture. You affect your church culture by what you do where you are. And what Jesus does is he says, listen, I'm going to be intentional about making the place where I'm at the way it should be by doing what I have to do. And wherever you are, be a culture creator. Don't just, don't just follow what everybody else is doing because sometimes everybody else is running off a cliff. Don't just follow what everybody else is doing because sometimes what everybody else is doing will get you in trouble. Don't follow what everybody else is doing because Jesus says that most people are on a path that leads to destruction, but very few people are on a path that leads to life. So be the culture creator, not the culture follower. So here's the deal. We're engaged. We're engaged and we pay ridiculous attention to Jesus. We're honoring we value others, especially authority. We are real. We're honest. We don't care what other people are saying around us. We are friendly to strangers, even to our enemies. And we're culture creators everywhere we go. And listen, in J-Box, we want to help drive those home. Listen, the very first part of this story, the disciples did this wrong, right? They're the only guys who are disengaged when an entire crowd is engaged. It's okay. We're going to mess up on some of these things. But as a J-Box family, together, we're going to strive to do these things together really well, okay? So let's do this. I want to pray for us. Would you all stand? I want to pray that God really helps us with these things. So would you do something? Would you just put your hands out in front of you? I'm going to pray for you. Father God, we need your Holy Spirit to give us power to do these things. We can't just do them on our own. We need your help. So God, would you show up? Would you help us to be real and honoring and engaged and friendly and culture creators? Would you help remind us of these things when we forget them? Would you help correct us on these things when we get them wrong? Would you help us celebrate these things when we see people around us get it right? Father God. I pray that in this place we would be honoring, in this place we'd be real, that in this place we'd be engaged, that in this place we'd be friendly, in this place, God, we would create the culture by your will. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen, amen. J-Box, I'm excited because I really hope these things challenge us. Y'all make some noise for Manny and Solby as they come up. There was nothing there. 